I'm Rebecca. And I'm Hunter. And this is The, the Family Showdown! Hello and welcome to Tuesday Shenanigans. Y'all ready for some shenanigans? Weekly? Maybe. I'm not ready for shenanigans. You're always ready for shenanigans. I you am shenanigans. That's true. Uh, no. Yeah, you're, you're shenanigans. So, <laughs> this is the variety show where, as Hunter likes to say, we do a variety of things. You ready to play, play. with board games? Play? Not play the board games. Play with the board games. What? We're going to do silly things with board games. Did I confuse you? Yeah, I'm a little confused. Difficult? Anyway, all right, folks. So it's been a while. I don't remember when we did one of these because we did a top ten, then we did BGG. So it's been it's been a in a hot minute, as the kids say. You don't hang out with kids. I have kids. <laughs> I'm forced to hang out with them. <laughs> all right, folks. Let's do it. Let's just jump yeah. right in. Yeah. Let's just jump right in. Loose right into the deep end. Oh, so what? Uh, uh, I have to do the buttons. Rebecca says I have to do the buttons. What did we play? So, interesting story. For the first time, maybe in the history of, of what did we play, Rebecca played more games without me and we played together. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy talk. All right. So I played four games with Rebecca. And Rebecca played six games without me. Womp womp. Yep. I was, I was, uh, uh. Antisocial? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> a permit? Something like a that. Permit? I don't know. I don't Some know. of it was at school. I, I really can't give you grief. One was at school. I don't know what I was doing. I just, I, anyway. Let's jump right in. Four games. I played four games. We played together. We're hurt. Four games. And I'll rank them always rank them from worst to best. Because he's crazy. So we'll start off with... And his taste my... in these games is sus. I think you'll agree... No, maybe not. <laughs> maybe <laughs> I should rank you'll these mostly games. Agree. Actually, you'll mostly agree with me. I wonder if I right. should rank these games. So we're, we're doing a thing. We're doing a thing. Story we thing. are? We're doing a thing? We're doing a thing where we're kind of grabbing games we haven't played in like a decade. Yes. And, and, and playing them. So the, like the first two on my list are ga games that fall in that category. Thusly, there's probably a reason why we haven't played them in a decade. <gasps> Not true. They're a little lower down on uh, my list. I give this a seven uh, because, eh, you know. <gasps> Patchwork. Did you say that a little faster? Patchwork. Patchwork. Like, what did you just say? Patchwork. Patchwork by Uwe Rosenberg. Not one of my favorite UVs. Maybe my least favorite UV. Probably not. Maybe. <laughs> I like No, the, wait. No, Bonanza. Like Bonanza's my least favorite Externalize least, your internal debate. My, my, my Bonanza is my least favorite UV. <gasps> I love Bonanza. Well, yeah. You got a 20th anniversary edition. Congratulations. 25th anniversary? 25th. Yeah. Patchwork. We played some patchwork. Uh, I didn't do very well. I don't know. What, I, 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 I used to be really good at patchwork back in the day. Back in the... When did this come out? Like 20 years ago? Uh, nine, 2014. Nine years ago? I used to be really good. I used to like almost fill up my board. Yep, you did. And I but did like, and I like filled, all I had like 20 places that were filled up for some nonsense. Anyway, uh, Patchwork is a polyomino game, pretty much a bare bones polyomino game for, yeah. for the most part. You're just drafting tiles or paying for them, buying whatever you want to say, however you want to say it. Right. And uh, you pay with time and buttons, buttons is your currency. And you're filling up your board and doing playoff stuff. What do you pay with your time? <laughs> I give it a meh. I don't even know what that means. Maybe you would give that a meh. I give it a meh. It's a, it's, it's it's a fun little game. I'm not going to go meh. like, oh my gosh, this is the most amazing game ever. But it's it's fun. It's a fun little game. It's a great little filler game. Crazy. It's a great little filler game. It's okay. It's an okay little game. But he's only saying that because he stunk at it. I did. I did horribly. He stunk at it. I thought I was up. dominating. There is no complete a, quilt on this side. I had of the a range. beautiful little no, quilt that had big. That you have to. That did. had a whole section missing out of it. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's somebody who's like, yeah, you ever going to finish that? And you're anyway, like, no, I'm never finishing this, this project. You somewhere to put that? Yep. All right. Always. Let's move on to my number three. Four. I give this an eight. It's a good uh, little two player game. It is Japur. 
This one's a great little Jaipur. Yeah, this is one of our. Fun. This should be like our. This is our go-to, like quick two-player, two-player game yep. back in the day. But now, not as much. But not we as still. Much. But it's good. I enjoyed it. I had a good time. We did. It's, it's still a solid eight. I Talk, give it. Talks a, a lot of smack. It, it keeps. Uh, it keeps that eight rating that it had for for years. When did this one come out, like twenty years ago. Here, I'll look while you yammer on. Two thousand thirteen. Uh, same, same, was it the same year? No, that, that was, was 2014. 2014. It's a good one. You're looking for a solid little two player game. It's got a reprint like in the last five years. I don't remember what oh, it's, oh, okay. like, it's like a little bit of a bigger box, maybe uh, a little pre reprint. Oh, why do we still have this? <laughs> I'm kind of surprised. We have the insert in this. Anyway, um, interesting. Yeah, it's a good one. Feeling for a solid little two-player yeah, game play that plays in like what twenty minutes? It's like super oh yeah, fast. it's quick. It's super quick. Does it say? Yeah, dead on the top. You keep weaving around. It's right there. Oh my god! I have no patience. It's more like twenty minutes. We fly through this game. We do. Especially if someone wins, uh, it's best two out of three. You know what? Shut up. If you win both times, it goes even faster. No reason. No reason. No reason. No reason. <laughs> All right. That's why it's an eight. Just Let's move on to it's my number game. two. I love that game. This one, I'm giving it an eight and a half. Uh oh, the bee wobble. I'm giving it an eight and a half. Bee dance. But it's got nothing but the potential to go up because this is not really designed to be a two player game. It works two player. It was good two player. I think this is more of a three player game. Three or four players. I think three will work out fine. Four players will be maybe better or worse. I think. I think. It's probably designed to be a three-player game, to be honest. But you know what? You keep delivering. They don't even know what the game player. is, and they're like bored out of their skull. I'm bored. I'm not bored. And I know what game it is. Oh my god! It's, it's not that heavy. It's yeah, it is. Lift that. Ooh, hey, you may recall I was lifting quite heavy games when my head filming. Hegemony, 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 whatever you want to call it. So we played this two players. It worked just fine, two player, but it felt a little unbalanced. This little maybe. We're... How dare you say that, you capitalist pig? <laughs> You might guess what player I was. So Hegemony <laughs> is a game of, uh, it's a political science based game. So basically each player is playing a different class or a different social class, however you want to say it. There's the capitalists, there's the middle class, there's the workers, and there is the Government. state. So I think, Big this, is my, this is my personal opinion, it seems to me that Adding, so I played the capitalist, Rebecca played the workers. It seemed like the capitalist had a little bit of an advantage. I think the middle class will balance that out. It seems like those two I was balance definitely each other. Those two balance each other. And the state seems like an add-on to me, but I'm just, that's just from what I read from the rules. It played it played just fine two-player. I, I want to play it again, two-player, and swoop it around and see uh, see it from Rebecca's oh, perspective. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're going to see if you, I was truly as downtrodden as yeah, I made it yeah. seem. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I see how I won going. fairly handily as a capitalist. Yeah. I was mostly busy picketing and rioting. That <laughs> might have been with me, like, oh, just striking. I was in strikes, you guys. I could go on strike, and I could insult the capitalists, and it was hilarious, and I enjoyed myself immensely. So maybe I should play the middle class next time, so I chill out a little so bit. So this one's very I, interesting. I rose up as the workers. I united. We fought for our paycheck, and he hosed me on my income. As soon I as we did. we striked, and he's like, "Okay, I'll raise your income." So we're like, "Yay!" We go back to work, and he's like, "Next round." He's like, "And I dock your wages again." And I'm like, <laughs> "Anyway, so this one is the guy is based on a lot of political rough. science." There's actually, I should hate this game. There's actually a document that uh, describes uh, kind of the Yawn. thought process and the background <laughs> and the political science behind the game. You can tell. There's a lot of knowledge and effort that went into the design of this game. And, I, yeah, I just think that three players is where it's at. I, I think just, so. Just from reading the rules, I know, I have no knowledge of that. I just, from reading the rules and seeing how things And how we interact, played it and stuff, yeah. And after playing it, it seems like that I had little competition for what I was doing. Whereas, no, it's true, because we're, we're, we're doing totally different things. Right, whereas totally the middle class things. and the... Capitalists, I think, will butt head some in terms right. of businesses and, and things like that. competing for, for me, the workers. Correct, correct. Because I basically, the, the, the state kind of just sat there as a lump and didn't yeah, really do a lot. And so my only real job opportunities were with you. Right. And the middle class provides a lot of other options and stuff. Right. But yeah, I, I should hate this game. I really should hate this game. I hate political crap. But this was actually kind of fun to play and you could get into the roles and be ridiculous. I enjoyed it quite a bit. And we had a good time with and it. And I definitely want... Surprisingly. I'm looking forward to trying this three-player. Yes. Like I said, I think 
it'll bump up to a nine. Yes. Just my it gut might. instinct. It might. Yeah, I don't know if we play a three player, maybe. but we'll see. Maybe. But we're gonna play it again two player eventually yep. and swap Trade roles it. and see how that goes. Because there's a couple of things you realized at the end that you should have done, done that, that should have yeah. done differently. So anyway. It's a good one. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, do not play with uh, people you think will... Uh... Get really political. Correct. <laughs> Hegemony. 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 Oh, my gosh. Hegemony. And my favorite game that we played together, together mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is In Process. What does it say? In Progress or In Process? Anyway, one of those two. Um, we're playing Ticket to Ride Legacy. It's set up right down there because we're playing, and I think we're six games in, five, six games in, something like that. We are one, two, three, six games in. How do you know this? I put dots on my box. Oh, okay. So we're six games in. <laughs> so we're halfway. Halfway there. Anyway, we're halfway. We can't show you because it's a legacy Spoilers. Game. Spoilers. Oh, we don't spoilers. want to spoil this. But I do it have, has a, been I do have fun. a cover for you here, the box cover, the empty box cover. Um... Uh, uh, Ticket to Ride Legacy, Legends of the West. This has been really fun. I'm so enjoying far. this. I give it a nine, but we're not done, so that's a tentative, 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 tentative. Nine. I think it it, it has potential to go nothing but up. Um, but we're having a blasty blast playing uh, Ticket to Ride. The storyline's been pretty entertaining. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good little game. I'm enjoying it quite a bit, and it's it's it, it's. Domino my... and Leacock like did some great tweaks with this. I feel like I can see, you know, like the hints of like their their skills in doing other legacy games. In it this. reminds like, me can... a lot in terms of how the game flows and how the mm -hmm. game works in terms of growth and learning rules it reminds me a lot of pandemic, pandemic. legacy it's yeah. very similar in, in that, right in that it's built on the game you already know right and it's, it's ramping it, up it starts off very you're very very minimal rules you're basically playing basic ticket to ride and it adds a little little piece yeah. each time each 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 uh each time you play it adds another little piece to the game and i'm having an awesome time with yeah this so far so Nothing but good things to say about Ticket to Ride Legacy. If you like Ticket to Ride, you need to be playing this. Honestly, it's a great experience so far. So unless the ending to this just totally tanks, which I honestly don't see. No. I'm enjoying um, it quite a bit. It's it's a lot of fun. It's set up. We're going to finish it. We'll finish it before I, the end of the year for sure. I have a love-hate relationship with Legacy Games and doing these videos because I really want to make a spoiler video so bad of all of the <laughs> legacy games. I really do because it's so fun and we cannot talk about we can talk the about, cool fact. We can do gen gen generalities. No, we can't. We're like, so it's about trains and we have to stop there because we can't explain if they change anything or what they do it's with okay. a map it's okay. or how you played the it's game. Okay. We love it. That's all you need to know. If you like Ticket to I want to talk about play the it. game. Play it. All right. That's it for me. I'm done. I'm going to take, take the next 15 minutes off and let Rebecca talk. She played uh, some games. I did. She played six games without me. I, I, I said that earlier. Yes. And we're. I'm just going to fire the matter, and yes. he is going to talk about them. So Excellent. up first, we got... Sequoia. Sequoia. This is a cute little game by All Play. I introduced this to my board game group, and Hunter would absolutely hate this game. Um, this you know. is a tweaked Yahtzee kind of game. Ooh. Yes. It's kind of fun. It was fun. There's a little bit of light strategy, but it's pretty easy to figure out what other people are doing. You've got um, your own set of color dice and your own trees, and you've got a slew of numbers two through 12 on um, here. And you're gonna roll your four dice and you're gonna make two, well, they're five dice, I take that back. There's five dice, you're gonna make two pairs and have one as an outlier. And whatever those two, like the addition of the two dice that you add up, so say I had, I don't know, five fives. That's really boring, but for example. Then I'd have two tens. Right, I'd have two pairs of 10. So I'm gonna put two of my little tree trunk things on the 10. 
everyone's doing this at the same time it's simultaneous and you're going to do this for i'm trying to remember is it 10 rounds i think it's 10 rounds and you're trying to secretly get um the most you want to get the first or second place in all of these different places and you get first and second place tokens and there's a mystery on which what the amount of victory points it's on them and stuff at the end and whoever has the most victory points at the end of the game is the winner it's cute it's a little you get special things if you roll all the same number like i don't know why i just said that it's, it's a sequoia it's not a yahtzee but it's a sequoia if you do that and you get a special little thing if you do that um but the trick is people don't see what you're going to do until you actually place your trees so you're trying to hope to spread the love so you're getting first or second place in as many different areas as possible um and occasionally of course just the way the dice roll you end up duking it out with people for those things so it's quite the spread of people getting victory points here and there and everywhere it just depends on how the dice are rolling in that particular game um again it really does feel kind of like a yahtzee thing because it's like okay i got this so i'm gonna try to do this combo this time and try to get oh and then somebody rolled basically the same stuff so we're gonna be fighting for supremacy at that and it's really just a laid back quick little game it's a great little filler game and especially if people like dice games and want to do something different but crazy heck of light so there you go interesting yes but my kiddos enjoyed it Good. They like. That's they like, all that matters. Exactly. They like. They like as the they, as what, little bit of variety. As they say that's all that matters. A little bit of variety. All right, let's move on. Yes. So the last five was played without me during uh, Thanksgiving break because I was in a turkey coma. <laughs> you a, did. You I did. I passed you out on the couch out. for like three hours, and you played board games the entire time. Pretty much. Pretty much. That's pretty. Good. With. That's pretty good. The little one. Yes. And her sibling. My bro. All right. <laughs> so let's start off five games. We did. Here's the first one. We cracked them out. We played Blockus or Blocus, depending on who Blow you talk coup. to. Bloku. Whatever. We my family always called it Blockus. Block us. Blockus. Yeah. Bloku. Blocus. Blo whatever. It's Blockus. <laughs> my family calls it Blockus. We're gonna continue to call it Blockus. So this one is it's We've had this, gosh, since it first came out. This is like a family favorite. We played this the holidays all the time. And you pick a color and you've got these neat, transparent, little different cube-shaped things. Square-shaped, whatever. English. Struggling. Um, polyomino shapes. And you're trying to fill up the board and get all of your weird, twisted, unique pieces on the board. But there's placement rules how you have to do that. But you can interact with other people's pieces, but you have to be diagonal with yours. You can't touch long, like a length aside along with yours. So the placement's a little funky, but you can play along other people's colors and stuff. So you're kind of interweaving with everybody else and cutting off people from things. It can be very cutthroat. We usually try to play... A little more on the friendly side to see if everybody can place all of their pieces. It gets pretty crazy. Depends on everybody's mood, though. A lot of fun. Blockish. All right. Family favorite abstract game. And then to mix things up. Oh. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if I put the right button. Oh, I'm going to risk no. it. Oh, no. Let's see what happens. Oh, ready? no. Oh, yeah. Hey. And to mix it up, my family, once this one came out a year or so later... This is Blockus Trigon, and they're little triangular shapes instead of being squares. Yes, tricksy. Um, but again, it's polyomino shapes. Basically, you play the same game, except it's with triangular, weird polyomino shaped things instead. And it does change the placement up a little bit. You kind of have to look at it a little bit differently. Again, fun little abstract game. We love playing it. We had a lot of fun. Family favorite. What else you got? Throw them at me. This is one of my brother's favorites. Ink and gold. Um, did he win? I think he won this one, actually. I think for the first time, like, ever. He was I, was, I was snoring away on that. I was snoring, you were really. snoring. I was sleeping on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> but I, this is one of our little go-to games that we have played a cabillion times. In fact, we've sleeved our cards because they are so worn. They're actually faded in spots. And <laughs> you have a little tent to hide your gems. And what you do is you're going to go, you're flipping cards... And the cards are either going to be treasure or bad things that happen to you Indiana Jones style, like a bunch of deadly snakes or some kind of mummified zombie thing or a rock fall or fire. Ah. Um, and if two of the same kind of bad cards show up, then 
and you haven't left with your jewels, you're out and you don't get any jewels. You're out for the round. So the trick is pushing your luck. How far can you get along in the tomb and how much gems can you get and then decide to leave before all the bad stuff happens. And you play, I think it's five rounds of that and we always have a good time with it. It was a lot of fun and it's always very um, hilarious. For some reason, I don't know, I was like channeling your energy. I was doing crazy press your luck just maybe, stupid nonsense. Me. I did miss you. And I lost <laughs> handily because I pulled a hunter. Yes. Usually I'm like, ah, that's good enough is for that me. A you thing? Know, that's a thing. Right. When it comes to press your luck, pulling a hunter is, oh yeah, I can get some more. I'm going to win this. And then losing. That's usually what that is. Fun game. Oh my gosh. Nessa will never, ever outgrow this game. This is like <laughs> one of her favorite games. I think she got this at a, when we do one of our traditional Valentine's Day board game purchases. And she fell in love with the art. And we've played Seikatsu a billion times. She pulls this out to play with her uncle. And it was it was fun once again to play this. Um, originally, Seikatsu was, I think, a game with birds. But they made this little Pets Life one, and it's so cute. It's got cutesy art, and it's like putting your pets on different colored cushions. I mean, it is just the most ridiculously adorable theme. And then you have a fun little abstract game out of it that has two rounds of scoring. And it's quick. It takes like... It says 30 minutes on the box. It takes like 10 minutes to play this game. It's really fast. I don't know how much you well, think, okay. think about your moves. Well, like, if you think about your moves and plus like... The number of players too. And the age of the players. Like Nessa's no longer little and she strategizes quite a bit. She's a video gamer like crazy. So this is like quick, quick strategy now. But back in the day when she first got it, man, we were pouring over those. Oh, should I play my bunny or should I play my kitty cat? Or, you know, I mean, there was a lot of strategy going on. But nowadays it's... Quick like lightning. Cute little ridiculous game. <laughs> okay. So, Nessa, the first thing I told her that my brother was coming over, and the first game that she thought of that she wanted to play was Drone Home, which I found hysterical. Are you actually going to pull this out? You're actually. Oh, no. Say goodbye to the mics. At least they top out and you don't go deaf anymore. The, the hunter is, is gonna be that guy. He's we're gonna we're gonna play an impromptu game of drone home. You have to understand I bet there's still enough it's charge. Not a game of round. A round no, not the same diff. Here, are you like green? The charge? I bet it's charged enough because Nessa fully charged it and we only played two, three games. Oh, uh, we'll be hunting for these later. So you get three little alien dudes. And that's all you get. And uh, the goal of the game is to get your aliens off into the spaceship and have it take off. And this is so gonna hit the... It's cool, it's cool. It's cool. Is it on? Yeah, it's on. See the light? See the light? That means it's on. Okay. Is it on? It's on. Are we sure? Yep. You want to test it? Why? Ready? White. Set. Go. No. No. Oh my. I'm off my game. Butthead. Oh no. It went down the table. No. <laughs> oh, what is that? <laughs> I was on the ship and he knocked me off right when it took off. And that's why I'm the reigning champion of this game, baby. Uh, uh. We'll be finding these pieces for days, fool. All right, put this up. Yep. So that's that's going home. What's that lovely? Oh, here, yes. And there's a piece somewhere over there, and I think there's an alien. Your alien somewhere in the floor. Um. Yeah. So we're finding that some other time. So here's my uh -huh. alien. Where's oh, yours? Oh, maybe. Hmm. I got nothing. Maybe mine's the red one that's gone. Find it later. Drone home. Here. Put <laughs> the cat is in your mouth. Smokey can't decide if he wants to kill it or be scared of it. And he mostly wants to kill that game. I'm just waiting. It's oh he's he's in hunter mode. This is great. <laughs> so we played several rounds of that. Um unfortunately, for whatever reason, I am like the reigning supreme master at this game, so everyone else got bored with it pretty quickly because I destroyed them handily. 
Yeah, I wouldn't play. I just threw you handily. You just saw it. You Why? barely got Why it. Camera? You barely got it. Horseshoes and hand grenades. Barely. Horseshoes and hand grenades. Hardly. Get off. Almost. Get off my lawn. Doesn't count. All right, that's it. That's all the games. Did we play all the games? That's all the games? Wow. That is all the games, We folks. had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. That is good all times. the games. Good all right, time. let's move on. Hopefully that wasn't too crazy loud. Ah, uh, this tops out. If anything, it was just chaos. Oh my gosh. Dang it. You did that. You did that. That was all you. Oh, you messed up our legacy game. All right. Can't have nice what things going on right now. You do. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Which one did I pick? Oh, this one. This one. We've got New Sjord. We've got Mercator. So this is the tail end of our Ube games. Okay. Mixed with our sci-fi games. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is a great shelf. <laughs> so New Sjord. Wow. Uh-oh. Somebody's going to have... Hey, hey, we're, uh, hold up. I got I got a dust while he's fixing things. Let's see. That's part of this routine. He's doing close up so you guys can see my dusting. Yeah, yeah. no one wants to see you dust. Acting dusting shot. That's right. Look at that shiny, beautiful, dusted shell. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Newsfjord, Mercator, uh, Euphoria. Uh huh. I don't need to your these box to be fixed. Euphoria. I'm not fixing that right now. Sorry. I'm not Oh. What was that? Nope. Mr. Thomas. What have you done? <laughs> no. And Star Trek Catan. Okay. Okay. All right. I am going to tell you straight. Okay, let's look at all these. So, <laughs> funny story about Star Trek to Catan. Um, one, this came out and we were so excited about it because we were first playing board games and stuff and we're like a star trek version of literally anything was exciting so we're like star trek and that's hilarious and i think for christmas that year like three different we bought it for ourselves and we got gifted it twice twice <laughs> because everyone knows us <laughs> so it's like we will always have a star trek ton. This is our only Catan, I think, that we have anymore, isn't it? It is. It's basically Catan, but it's Star Trek themed, so you have the Enterprise for your ships that you move around, and, like, it's it's cute, and you're getting, like, dilithium crystals instead of sheep and stuff like that. So it's, it's corny cheesy. Unfortunately, out of this shelf of greatness, it's going to have to go at the end, I'm just going to say. So that leaves Mercator, Nusfjord, and Euphoria. So this may shock Hunter some, but I'm going to put Euphoria next. I like this game a lot. This is, isn't this a Stegmeier game? Uh, a Stonemeyer, Stegmeier. I always interchange that. Um, it's about building a better dystopia, and it's got a very strange theme about keeping your people... Your, your, it's like you were Big Brother, keeping your people happy. And by happy, under your thumb is basically what it is. And it's a weird um, thing where you're managing your resources, and you have to go to spend them to continue to do those things to keep your people happy and all that. And it is... Um, a weird game. The theme is funky. I really enjoy the the mechanisms and stuff in the game, but the theme is a little 1984 to me. So I'm not super crazy about the theme. Um, so I'm going to have to put that in third place, I think. And why don't you do that where people can watch? It's so entertaining. And struggling to get the thing yes, right? Yes, it's just entertaining. Hunter is putting on these... I am so, I am in love with these. Hunter got these, and this is probably one of the best board game accessories we've gotten in a while. 
because as you saw that board game was like crazy falling apart and stuff and now i can hold it by the lid i'm not even putting pressure on it so it should it's not holding the bottom in place the bands are holding the bottom in place it makes me so happy so it's not a problem but connor may need that too actually see that see that oh. that was not bad that was not I'll bad enough i'll live oh, with that oh it's disgusting news fjord okay these two oh man I'm this this is gonna be kind of close, but I'm gonna have to put it like this. I think I'm gonna leave it with Newsfjord and then Mercator. I know Hunter's gonna change the the order of this by a lot. Because I have this weird thing about Mercator Mercator and I just love it and Hunter thinks I'm so weird. But Newsfjord is so much fun. I love the theme with this. You're going out and you're fishing and you want to you, you want the the old wise fishermen that live in the village like tell you where the fish are and everything so after you've gotten all your fish you want to feed them a nice fish dinner and thank them for you know their knowledge and expertise and sometimes we kind of help each other out with stuff so you have to feed some of your fish to the other players you know and trade it off but then you get all these different abilities of things you get to do it's not always the same like Uwe Rosenberg style game. You're feeding your people, but it's it's all fish. It's interesting. And I just love the fact that you're like, you know, feeding your old your old codgers. I love them. they're like sitting at the table ready to eat. And you put they have these little plates and you put them down on there and stuff. It's really cute. I just love the theme of this game and I think it's really fun to play. Um but Mercator, I don't know what it is about this game, because the the theme is dry, honestly. But I really like the fact that it is so abstracted because you're going around and you've got bits and you're traveling to certain areas to get bits and you're getting different bits and trading them for other bits and then you're traveling to another area and sell those bits and so it's a puzzle between moving around on the map and selling and buying these bits and then using the bits that are on your inventory and stuff and like you have cards that give you victory points for the end game stuff and different abilities and whatnot. Um, each area is like, um, let's see, for example here, um, let's see here, contracts, contract from Filmit. Like England, they need three plums, two spice, and one, they put one vegetables, really? Edit your stuff, people. One vegetable. So, and then you get X amount of victory points for turning that in. So you're going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, build that up. And then you're going to go drop that off in England. Ta-da! You get a bunch of victory points. I love that. It's kind of almost pick up and delivery kind of stuff. And it's trading and engine building and all this stuff. And I just absolutely adore that. I like the theme for New Sphere way better. But I like, I don't know, I like the logistics of Mercator. Plus it's called Mercator, which is Latin for merchant. And it's nerdy. So there you go. All right, there's my order. I have Mercator, Newsfjord, Euphoria, and Star Trek Catan. Okay, I'm going to predict. I'm going to predict. I think you like this one best. Right? I think it's going to go like this. This is my guess. He's walking away. He's walking away. He left me. He agrees entirely. Oh, he's getting another ban from my games. He's eyeballing my game now. Did I do it right? Did yeah, I... no. What? Did I put it in the right order for you? No. Really? You like this thing? No. Did I have it? You have you like it the same way I do? That'd be crazy talk. Do you really? No, he needs to mess with me. <laughs> I'm like you're not. Don't even. All right, so put it th put it in your special order. Newsfjord. Okay. I didn't realize you liked it that much. That's awesome. I don't. Oh, what? These are all kind of me. So, so uh, Star Trek Catan, Catan, just it just it's played oh out God. for me. Um, I I might play it if someone really, really, really wanted to play it, but um, now it's just nostalgia gift. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Mercator is like key push of the game. It. Uh, I love it. It's okay, um, but. It's, I it's love good. it. I mean, I, I would play it. It's good. It's okay. It's contract fulfillment. He loves kinda, contracts. Kind of engine building kind of stuff. Yep. Euphoria is a big, not a big, but it's somewhat of a disappointment for me. I should love this one more than I do. It's just got so many fiddly little rules. It is fiddly, yeah. And so many things going on. It's just, it's too much for what it is. That's uh, fair. 
and it plays fast, and you feel like you don't get to accomplish much. Right. It's over before you know it kind of game. Um, and News Fjord is a new big game, but it's... Fisherman. It's... What what the kids say? Mid. Wow, you and what the kids say. Oh my god. It's kind of mid. It's it's it's, it's probably looking at our Ube games. It's by bottom of the pack. <gasps> I disagree. I, I don't disagree. Hmm. The only ones I would put below it that we own. No. Is Great Colt. Really? You're crazy. That's it. The only Uve oh, game. No. Oh, besides patchwork and of the big box UVs, this would be my second to the lowest of the ones we owned. Some people. So yeah, this deserves a box ban because uh, perfect, look right? at this thing. Look at this nonsense. See? See, it did need it. You were trying to poo-poo my Mercator game is what you were. You were yeah. like, I don't want to waste a Not band on it. Exactly. Game. Game. Been been caught. Game. I've been caught. <laughs> <laughs> All right, get rid of these and I'll fix this. All right, sounds fair. Sounds fair. So... I enjoy them quite cool. I throw board games on the floor. Blah, blah, blah. I'm the worst at putting these box fans on for sure. Live. We should do a video. Watch Hunter ban the, ban the boxes. Band the boxes. We should just do a video channel banding boxes. Almost. <laughs> you can really do it up here so everyone can see your glorious work. You, they they hate you. They they what? fight against you. There's look at this. See, look, it was falling apart before. Man, these are the bomb. I love them. Yeah, I'm about to get more of those. Yeah, I think so. All right. Um. So, <laughs> that's it. That's not the shelf. That's it. Good night, folks. Huh? Oh no, that's not what you meant. No, that's it for that segment. You got me. Let's move on to the next one. Where is it? Key cats. <laughs> As always, I pick a random board oh, game no. mechanism or oh, no. thing, uh, theme, oh, no. or What'd something. So what three games that have something in common? We're gonna rate them from worst to best, best to worst, however you want to look at it. Bye, borrow ban. Re Rebecca goes first, and then I tell her why she's wrong. The games are Vampire Radar, Stone Armor, Hidden Movement, baby, and. Fury of Dracula. Oh gosh. That, you always pick the hardest things. All right. So I'm going to do this ranking for me personally, not for genericus, for gamericus, because I think it would rank very much, very differently. Very differently. All right. I am not putting any nostalgia. Or anything like that on this. I am just ranking from which ones I like the best from the one I like the worst. But this is the Rebecca show right now, so let's see what happens. Cue the swish switching things. No, I'm not gonna, no. no, not the yodeling music. No. I was thinking just like whooshing. Do your own sound effects. I'm tired. I don't, <laughs> I want <that. laughs> I don't know why it sounds like a blizzard or something, but anyway, <laughs> just whoosh. <laughs> All right. I'm going with this. I want to buy Fury of Dracula. This game was ridiculous. I cannot wait to play it again. This was the most like suspense and anxiety I've had in a game in a really in, in a good way uh in a long time. And I wasn't even Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, just trying to work as a team to hunt him down. And he knew the clock was ticking because if he gets back to his castle and somehow you don't cut him off or something or you don't discover him, he gets like super powerful and we're all going to be killed. So then you're deciding, should we split up? Should we not? Are we strong enough to stand alone? Like there's all these things. We're like, oh, the decisions we have to make. And the whole time, you know, just waiting for him to be like, poof, I'm right behind you the whole time. Ha <laughs> ha, you know, and yeah. Oh, it's intense. I did not think you could make a game have that much tension and drama, but you can, and it was great. It's a longer game. Um, Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Two to three hours. That is 100% correct. Did we play with four or five players? I think we played with five, didn't we? Five. Yes, and it was magnificent, and I would 
probably never want to play with anything less. I think that was just awesome. Who what an experience. Like, I get edgy just thinking about it because it really was a tense, crazy game. Even while you're going to have your turns and nothing's going to happen until you make a move, you're sitting there going, ah, I feel like I'm just doing something. It's really good. I would borrow... But I did buy this. But Vampire Radar. We bought all of these. I know, we bought all these. I know, I know. <laughs> I would borrow this because... Um, and this is why I said I'd probably rank these differently if I was doing it for Joe Average Gamer because good luck finding this game if you do not live in Japan. It, I actually had to have one of our uh, friend, friends and viewers, hi Julian, um, help me get this. <laughs> so he got it locally and mailed it to me um, to surprise Hunter. And oh my goodness, this is another little hidden dracula game i we have a theme going on here and it is so cute because it's just a little little map and you're going around and you can use a radar to, like ping how many blocks away um the vampire is from you but there's also walls you have bullets but you only have a certain number of them and you also can't get bitten by dracula in the process so dracula is flitting around somewhere trying to dodge away from you but at the same time he's trying to kill you before you get to him it's a fun cat and mouse game and it's a lot of bang for this little tiny box and that's vampire radar and sadly i had to pick one to ban and i'm gonna pick sonar this game's a little bit fragile to me it's a blast to play and i love it but if people don't quite clue in on what they're supposed to do this is very much a you rely on your teammates kind of game. So if you screw it up, <laughs> you're not going to win. I mean, it's just, you're done. It's like playing Battleship, but live action with the ships moving on a grid. It's so fun. But again, it's, this one is different from Captain Sonar because this one is turn-based, if I remember right. Or is there a live version? It's a live it's version, both? but it's uh, but it's uh, it's for four play two to four players. Two to four players instead, instead of, of the four to eight players that what? is the... I think the one, the Captain Sonar might only be eight. I don't know. Captain Sonar goes up to eight, yeah. And, uh... What the heck am I doing? I, I'm not sure what I'm you're very, doing exactly. I don't know. I'm so tired. But the game is um, a lot of fun. But again, if your teammates don't know what they're doing or don't work well under pressure, that sort of thing, or don't wait, do the things in the right order, it can mess it all up. And next thing you know, you completely screwed up the game. So it's a little bit fragile because of that. So I had to punish it. And that's why I banned it. <laughs> so not. There you go. Bye. Borrow. Ban. What would you pick? I knew it. Hold up. You would ban it? Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. So I got He's buy, sick. borrow, ban. Oh, you butt. I knew it. I, I agree with you. What a butt. I agree with you. <laughs> as boring as that is, I agree with you. I love, love, love this game. This game's got, is, is fun, it's a blast. And this one is, okay. There you go. All hidden movement greatness. Yep. Check them out. Do you I'm agree? Man. Do you disagree? All right. Tell us. Let's keep the party think? going. Our last oh, yeah. segment of the night. Oh yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, I found your red one. You did? You did! Nice! You have to put it in a little station to launch it. Are you actually going to launch this right now? Well, Hunter effectively just nuked every bit of the Legacy game that was still organized just now. Meh! And it sucks because Meh. you didn't get to watch it because it would have spoiled right. it. So the theme you're going to have tonight, you ready for this? I'm ready for this. Is how cute the plushie would be that represents this board game. All right. 
I can do this. So, just so you know, we are taking suggestions over on our board game Geek Guild. The link is down in the tap description. Uh, Corlew set up a was nice enough to set up a little thread with a bunch Thank of her you. ideas. We're taking our picks from there. Um, we also have some that were during our live shows. We wrote some down, so we're using that as a source. Yep. Um, so the neutrals. There you go. Some other people so, have thrown some stuff in there. You guys are plushy. Awesome. All right, I'm ready. Plushy. Plushy. Okay. Oh, I got a good one for you. Plushy. You ready All right. for this? Trivial Pursuit plushie. What you gonna do? This isn't the VHS one, right? No. I don't I never owned the VHS. This is a 20th anniversary. Do they have VHS? <laughs> Not this one. So I haven't ever played this. Um, that's why I'm opening it. I've never played this version. Apparently ever. we haven't played this one a lot. Because... I haven't ever played this version. But I do notice this thing. What is this? This is it's the card holder, the nice card holder. Oh my gosh! Look at this. You get like a, a dealer, a dealer card dispenser. You just go whoop. So you know what the plushie is going to be right here. This is the plushie, little card dispenser plushie. What's what's cool though is it it looks like the card dispenser. It looks just like it, but it's actually a little animal. And this is like a little face. And he's got a little mouth. He goes. Nom, 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 nom. He's got a little plushy little mouth. Nom, 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 nom. Maybe we should have done this segment first and not when you're tired. <laughs> <laughs> I do get a little silly when I'm tired. So, no, can, you, can you envision it? Imagine like a little like a like a little animal's head here and there's a little mouth. Nom, 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 nom. Can you actually stuff cards in it? Maybe it has a little zipper that you can put, store things in. It's like one of those plushy like purse things. So while we're here, let's uh, let's do a little trivia question. Oh my gosh, what is going uh, on? Let's see. What what's your category? Science. Science. That, that, these categories are different. Oh, for crying out loud! Uh, <laughs> uh. Pick color. Innovations. Green. Oh, let's let's don't do the green. Let's okay. Do something else. Brown. All right, this is perfect. This is geek, geek knowledge here. Okay. What comic book superhero escaped from the Evanston, Evanston Asylum to fight evil in a city called The City? What comic book superhero escaped from Evanston Asylum to fight evil in a city called The City? The Tick. That's the only one that I know as The City. You are correct! <laughs> Okay, I feel good. I feel nerdy. Got my game back on. Okay, all right. So here, we're gonna leave this out. Oh, okay, nice, nice, nice. We're gonna leave the plushies out. No, I don't think I'll be able to do this for every game, but we're gonna leave that out. Okay. I don't know how to store this box properly. Apparently, you work on what? I need help. Oh my god. I need help. I need help. Need help. Just, just move this over here. Okay. Oh, oh, we got another good one. Holla. Holla. So, so if you don't know, oh my gosh, what happened with this? Oh my. You have a bag burst? A bag is open. I... Yeah. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> if y'all know better, you don't do that. What are you thinking? Oh dear. You never leave an Uve game. Oh. The sheep, they're like... Rabbits, well, they're you're, everywhere. You're you're ruining you're, you're ruining my my. How my, am I how am I ruining this? Make a plushie. I'm going to. Oh, I gotta. You don't need to repair the game. Yes, I do. Oh my gosh, he's so OCD. I, I, I got to it. fix oh this. It makes me sad. Oh anyway, Holotow is a Uve game. You know what? Has, Uve guys, he has sheep, little sheep. Oh so it's gonna be, of course, it's gonna be a cute little sheep plushie. But it's but it's it's uh it's uh it's one it's, it's, it's like uh. A, a pair of plushies. Um, it's a, a a little boy sheep and a little girl sheep, and uh, they're so cute and cuddly and loving and sweet. And uh, yeah, I w I could do it. I could do a. Oh my god! Okay, we're gonna do this. Put this. In, this they're everywhere. The whole box is full of friggin' animeeples. <laughs> we'll just we'll just pretend we didn't see that. <laughs> So, cute little boy and breeding girl sheep because, you know, in any UV game, you got to breed your sheep, right? And get more sheep. I don't even know if you do that in this game. I think you do. Um, but, little sheep plushies. Can't go wrong with sheep plushies, right? I, I thought I could do some, like, corn and uh, corn and uh, 
Uh, what's other wheat? Wheat uh, plushies, Rain. but that's not very fun. A couple of sheep, little cute little sheep plushies. Please tell me it's cuter than the card. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm not, yeah, it's better than the the uh, little card dispenser head animal this head. This is something. I'm, 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 this I'm, is I'm, something. I'm, 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 okay. Uh, Oh, I got you a softball after those. Those that was hard. Oh, go. little penguins! Or as they say, penguins. Penguins. Pe- penguins. He says penguins. It's penguins. What was that? What was that? It was Pe- Cumberbatch said that in a documentary. Yeah. Penguin. Penguins. Penguins. He couldn't penguins. say penguins right, and he lost. We his have mind some afterwards. penguins. All right, so yeah, ice cool. So ice cool's a, a cool a, a, a game about little penguins that go around and. Uh, Skip class and grab fish and uh, do uh, delinquent things. Look at their little high school. So they have little, a uh, little tiny little uh, delinquent plushie. But here's the thing. Delinquent plushie. So what's here's the thing about the penguin plushie is it actually is a little, it's a little penguin, but the bottom part of it is filled with sand. So it actually, it actually is almost like a. Oh, a, one of those weebles. Yeah, weebles. It, it what the hell? Fall down. It actually kind of stands up a little bit, so it's like a. So it's like a. And if you throw it at your sibling, it'll like break their head. Yes, for, of course. Like any good toy does, right? You gonna take one out to represent your. Yeah, just show, well, no, just no, just show you what the little. little does the, oh my gosh! What is? What is? What? Um, <laughs> We're having it's technical difficulties with board games night. Apparently, for four hunters. Hey, Wayne. <laughs> Over here. Can you see any cute? All the penguins are at the bottom. See how he does a little weevil? And you're gonna make that but like yay big? Yeah, yeah, but it's it's plushy. So it's basically it has a uh, has a bottom part that's plastic that's got God that would that's got like (laughs) Well you know it's covered it's covered in 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 flush plushy stuff. But the bottom's kind of plastic and and solid and has sand in it, so that actually the plushy will actually stand up and wobble. Yeah. Don't you know, if you're good, you know, if you're good at ice cool, you can flip the thing and it starts a way that he'll they'll go around corners. Yes, don't do that. No, no. Or, I and and you can actually, computer. and he actually can flip them so that they'll pop, oh, pop up over and go walls. over walls. Don't do it. Don't. Here we no, go. No. Almost did it. See that? Well, now your plushie's over there. Good job. Good job. Penguin is in first place. The penguins are cooler than sheep. I mean, sorry, but it's true. All right. Next, you have bread. <laughs> oh dear! What am I gonna do with this? I know. No, no, no. So you think? What were you gonna say? Big cushy one of those squishmallow, but a loaf. No. So that's too easy. What? That's too easy. What? No. What the the plushies? I actually, think it'd be awesome. So you know, you know, you know, in in in, in the, all the fantasy and medieval uh, movies. You always have that in that jolly innkeeper, that happy innkeeper. Like Butterbur. That's way that's way too happy, huh? Like Butterbur. Yeah, just way too happy about everything and jolly and and and, and very rotund. And uh, that's the plushie, the innkeeper. <laughs> the, the jolly happy innkeeper is the plushie. Hey! He's got a little. He's got a little. He's got a little plate. A uh, little little tray with beer beer bottles on it, like this, and I mean, he's got, he's got, like a, he's got like a big a... poofy uh, uh, chef hat and uh, an apron. <laughs> it's kind of got you know because it's medieval. It's kind of like got like you know it's all mushed and like stained and stuff. And uh, yeah, that's the plushie. Can you can you can you see it with your mind's eye? I totally can. <laughs> it's like the dude on the side here. Actually, he's on the front. That's well. That's not the innkeeper, but, no, that, but that, I mean, that'll he, work. He'd work. That'll work. He's like, like eh, oh, you see that? For you. I don't yeah. know why he's Italian. He got a mug a though. I really wanted more like a like you know the big tray with the, like tray with lots of mugs. With way too many beer beer mugs on on top of it. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know that's actually a competition. Yes. And you carry like th- forty of those beer things on one tray. That's crazy talk. Anyway, they have waiter competitions. So France. it's better than. Oh. Nah, 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 nah. Is it though? Is it better than sheep though? I like sheep. Sheep are kind of cool. No, third place. <laughs> Butterbur is third place. Oh, I can't wait for this next one. You ready for this? Make it a cute plushie. It's Carnegie. Carnegie. <laughs> Carnegie. Hi, cool. Do you want to sign? Okay, come here. Pseudo live. Carnegie. Yes, because we're on. We're filming. So you gotta be alive. There you go. You're gonna see her. So what? 
Uh, I'm, Ooh, it's cold outside. I kind of, I kind of, I kind of lost here. Um, <laughs> I, need, I need to open the box, to get some inspiration. I think because there's to... no back of the box inspiration. No. Back of the box review. Hold on. This is a splatter game. I actually have a, I have a, uh, I have a, a womp womp. I have a thing. You should have a womp womp. I have a thing for that. This is so meta. It's F. Like a segment inside the segment. F. F. <laughs> F. <laughs> what I'm saying before I got before I got distracted <laughs> is that uh uh I, I usually look at the back of a box to get ideas. And there's nothing there, so I'm gonna have to actually open this guy up. Because I don't know if there's any kind of uh an office worker. Well, I know what I was going to put, but I'm going to see if there's something better. Blush of Carnegie. No, no, that would be funny, though. <laughs> All right. I don't, I don't see anything that's inspiring me. I'm just going to thumb through. A little really... office desk? No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to go with my original idea. There's nothing better here. But how do you make sure the back of the box is going the right direction? Well, there's this little design. See, it's Art Deco, so it needs to be okay. You got it right. Anyway, it's a little train plushie. Lame. A little happy. I know. Yeah, it's lame. But hey, <laughs> what can I do? I think Carnegie would be a cute. No, plushie. that guy as a plushie. That's scary. That that would scare you at night. You'd be you'd be, <laughs> you'd be like sleeping. You'd be like like you'd be sound asleep. Carnegie's watching you. Know, over you, know, you. you know, once in a while, when you're sleeping, you kind of wake up a little bit and kind of uh, your flies eyes flutter open. You kind of look around the room and go back to sleep. Your eyes flutter open. There's Carnegie like staring don't, you in the face. You you'd be like. <laughs> You know, I, it's a little train it. plushie, but it's, but it's, it's a cool little plushie because it's a, like a little it's like a little locomotive, you know, a realistic looking locomotive plushie. Okay, but it's got like a little poofy little cotton little thing coming out of it to uh, oh the steam the little steam. Show the steam yeah yeah all right fine that's kind of cute does it look like Thomas the Tank Engine no it's a realistic it's not any of this Thomas this, is realistic not any of this Tom Foolery Tom no, that's Tom Foolery. We want realistic train plushies. No, Thomas the Tank Engine foolery here. Last place. <laughs> even even below. Um, no, 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 no. Okay, okay. Oh, this is a cut. Oh, there's a softball. That's a softball. Look at that. He can't beat that plushie. Look that's at that. That's adorable. Look at that. That's I don't even adorable. have to work. This is like a freebie. This is like, look at that. Look that's, at that's pretty a good. cute little dragon plushie. Oh my He's gosh, it's so, so cute. cute. Is the is the is the is the is the huh? Is the autofocus working? It was there. They could see. No, I want to like really like. This is how cute this guy is. Look at him. Look at him. It's so cute. Oh my gosh. Okay, you're cut off. No more sugar and caffeine after six p.m. Okay. Wow. I am so sorry. He's cut off. <laughs> First place. Oh my gosh. Okay, so everybody's scooting down. <laughs> Okay. Oh, what the best for last. I can't wait to find out about the exciting Democker plushie. <laughs> Man, I should have ended it there with the dragon. I know, I know what, I know what it's gonna be. I know what the plushie's gonna be. Oh my gosh. Uh, oh, I have a guess. What? A gavel. You, you get uh-huh. Right here, right here. I saw where you're going with that. I was a little like, gavel plushie. A little gavel. But what's funny is that so so I was all serious with Carnegie, Carnegie with the, the realistic train and really strict right. this gavel. You ever have one of those little gavels that little kids have that go wah, wah, you make that that, wah, 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 that sound with oh, yeah, wah, 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 wah. No, it has the no, it has the has the, oh, the no, of... no no the little the little um. Oh, remember you used to shake the stick and it made that little the little yes. weird sound it makes. Yes. Like the I can't think of it. I don't know. You you people at home, if you're from the nineties, if you've been around, you know what's 90s, up. You know what's up. That, that yep. weird, I that weird sound, sound it makes. Either. Yeah. I you know, wait, it's a stick and you turn it and it goes. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's and, closer. And, that's closer. And if you shake it, it goes. Yeah. It's a weird sound. <laughs> That's the sound this gavel makes. <laughs> this should be number one. This plushy gavel makes that weird '90s toy sound. Someone, someone in the comments, help me out. What is that? Toy Put a link in there with that, that sound effect. 
Oh, let's see. Um, it's go. better than the crowd of the train. Oh, uh, yeah. It's better than nom, 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 nom. It should be number one. Is it, it's better than uh, Butterbur. Yeah. But sheep? Yep. The gal. The sheep I love make, sheep. But they don't make any noise. Sheep are fun. You didn't even make your sheep ba. You can't go back and change it either. No backsies. No backsies. It's my list. No. Nope. Right there. <gasps> sheep are better than. Okay, I'm going to re rank these because I think Hunter got them. <laughs> this is her, not her. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay. From, from worst to best, we got the realistic train with the little poofy steam. We got the little animal head that goes nom, nom, nom. We got the Butterbur uh, Tavern Keeper plushie. We got the weird sound and gavel with the 90s toy thing or whatever it is. We need to put a thing on this. Anyway, Hawatow, we got the little sheep uh, sheep plushies. We got the little penguin. Pink penguin. <laughs> no, you Ping, can't say pengu penguin right. Pe penguin plushies. And we got the cute little dragon. It's got cute ears. It's so cute. <laughs> and that is a wrap. I, wow. Mm, that actually went much better and much more unexpected than I thought it would. That was something. It was something, that's that for sure. You got something. that right. It was something. Those we got so much cleanup to do after the show with all these. You know what? That is all your fault because I was not going to open It's your fault. Box. I You're get like, weird I'm when I'm tired. This. When I'm tired, I get weird. All right. That's it, folks. I got me tired. <laughs> that's for sure. All right. That's it, folks. That is it. That's it for today. Whew, I need a nap. Yeah, we brought out almost, I, an hour, I can't almost even, exactly an hour ish. An we hour. gotta clean up the legacy game. We gotta. Ooh. We got a lot to clean up. Anyway, <laughs> so let's do some housekeeping, some homework. Some. Uh, I already uh, dusted the shelf. I'm done housekeeping. I think the cat, the cat, clawed our table right here. Oh, I have to kill the cat. No. Poor Smokey. He All right. Spoiled. All right. So I blame you. So uh, if you're if you're if you're paying attention at home. Rebecca's Top 100 is going on right now. It is. We're releasing. We're going to try. No <laughs> no, no guarantees. We're going to try to release one a day this week. So if you're watching the show, there was one yesterday. There was one today as of the filming, releasing of the show. And we're going to do one Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And guess what? I guess it's number 11. So if you're keeping track at home. Crank it up to 11, the only baby. The 10 is left. So one week from tonight, Rebecca's Top 10 Games. Of all time. Of all time. And then one week from that, one week after that, actually, no, probably during the week. This is some random house. During the week. During the week. Because we're, we're no, hold on. So it's the, let me do some, some, some quick math here. So it's the fourth. So the day's the fourth. Uh oh, math. So the fourth. Not and then, name. so Rekka's top 10 will be the 11th. Yeah. So yeah, then the yeah. 18th, one week. Uh, one week from now, one week after. So this top ten, then the week after, top ten games of 2023, December 18th, and it's our anniversary. <laughs> so we're going to spend our anniversary kind of with you, kind of not, but we'll do our top ten games of 2023, December 18th. Uh, That's going to be fun. Yeah. Exciting stuff. So we got this is like a, this is like the cool the cool kid. All the cool stuffs happening. <laughs> got top ten all times. We got the 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 after after party during the week like a bonus. It's like a bonus. That's true. And then we fun. got then we got top ten games of twenty twenty three December on December eighteenth our anniversary. It's the big. No, it's not the big. It's mm -mm, a boring. It's, it's a boring one. I'm not boring. Fourteen's boring. 14 years. I've been with her for 14 years. It's crazy. That's got a medal or a ribbon or something. An award of some kind. An award. Sainthood. Yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I blew out the speakers. I was so excited about that. <laughs> All right. That's it for tonight, folks. All right. I need to go take a nap. <laughs> and take clean care. up all this stuff tomorrow. Oh, yeah. You're cleaning that up. You waving? Yes, I'm waving. Bye. Long or short lobby? Ah, uh, you guys deserve the long one. All right, let's do it. They're awesome. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. 
The sparkling drinks are just dandy. The chocolate bars and the candy. So let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Click subscribe to join our wonderful viewer community. Want to be notified when we upload a new video or go live? Click on the little bell below.